Good morning, class. Okay, for our discussion for today for the Edge of 202 teaching profession, we will be exploring more of the nature of teaching and some other related topics about it. Okay, so the nature of teaching begins with understanding that teaching is a process that facilitates learning. Always remember that. Okay, always remember that as you choose your course, BS Ed, BD Ed, is that you are intended and being shaped later on for you to facilitate the learning of your students because you are becoming teachers. Okay, it is a specialized application of knowledge. Okay, so meaning to say you need to have a knowledge for you to teach. You cannot give what you don't have. Okay, skills, attributes designed to provide unique service to meet the educational needs of the individual and the society. Okay? It's said that it is a unique service because teachers have variations or we are all different when it comes to choosing our teaching methods, strategies, and techniques for us to teach a particular lesson. Okay, what is the reason or what is that a point in time we decide that this will be our strategy in teaching? we look for the background of our students, okay? We look on, who are this, or what are the types of the students I am facing, okay? So from then on, it will be your point of reference for you to, to choose effective teaching strategy for that kind of students, okay? And always remember also that our students are diverse. They all have different backgrounds, phases of learning, some of them could easily get your lesson, some of them not. So as you choose your teaching strategy, and as you teach along the way, make sure that as you give your service, unique service to your students, every one of them could understand. Every one of them could address, or you could all address their different learning needs, despite of their differences, okay? Because that's the fact about teaching is that your teaching strategy should all administer uh, different kinds of students, okay? It emphasizes the development of values and guides students in their social relationships. So aside from you are teaching a particular lesson, you also shape their values, okay? In which the value will serve as a point for them to develop their social relationship, okay? How how are they going to socialize with people, with their classmates, with their teachers, at home, outside of the community, okay? They also learn that from you. They also learn that from teacher, not just the lesson, but also the values, okay? So when we mean profession, profession is an occupation, okay? It involves specialized training and formal qualification before one is allowed to practice or to work. Again, you are not allowed to practice that work if you are, if you don't undergo first specialized training and formal qualification, for example, to, to have your uh, uh to have your certificate in teaching or license in teaching before you could actually practice legally the work. Okay. Society and community plays a great deal of trust in the profession. This is true. Okay. Again, the society put so much of trust to us teachers because we are shaping the youth. We are shaping people. Okay. That is why teachers are also seen to be the mother of all professions. Okay. A noble profession because without teachers, there will, there will no be lawyers. There will no be uh, accountants, businessmen, okay, engineers, and so on. All of them were shaped from the teacher. That is why the trust, there's a great trust put by the, by the community to teachers as profession, okay? So make sure that to value, to value that trust that was given to you by the community, okay? The, the will is still on your the choice is still on your hands, okay? So make sure as you teach, uh, you teach because you wanted your students to learn, not because you have any other personal uh, personal reasons, okay? Or personal advantage, no? Pero kailangan, yung pinakaunan yung iniisip is whether your students will learn or not, 
make sure they learn. Okay? A formal qualification from a university or diploma or degree came over a time. Okay? That is when you could say that you are a professional teacher when you really finish your four-year degree course in teaching. Specialized knowledge meaning means teaching secondary, for example, English, mathematics. That is what we call the specialized knowledge. It is for the BSN, diba? secondary education. There are they, they have majors. Okay, major in English, Filipino, mathematics, biological science, MAPE, PLE, and history. In other schools, they have this one major in history, major in Islamic, and so on. Okay, that is what we call specialized knowledge. You can teach, but you still have this one particular specialty or subject in teaching. Okay, and then license or permission to practice exhibits high agreed standards of behavior and practice. Someone with high personal standards, especially when you're done the oath taking and you are now a fully pledged licensed teacher, then much more, no? The, the responsibility is in you, okay? The, certificate, the certificated teacher is the essential element in the, in the delivery of instruction to the students, regardless of the mode of instruction, okay? So uh, there are many instructional materials we have, maraming mga instructional material ang magagamit ng teacher, but the very most important instructional material will be the teacher itself, okay? Because without the teacher, the other objects or IMs will not be realized by the students, okay? So even without the support of these devices, if the teacher is equipped with the skills in very good skills in explaining, elaborating the, the lesson, then that's what's more important, first and foremost, okay? The teacher as an IM or instructional material to instruct the students to give or to give the lesson, to, to teach the lesson, to discuss, okay? To make an interactive communication with the students, okay? So do you see the very important role of teacher now? No? Teachers as professionals. A teacher has professional knowledge and skills gained through formal preparation and experience. Again, we have the special knowledge, specialized knowledge, and then through preparation and experience. No? Palagi merong preparation. Okay? Of course, when we teach, we need to be prepared enough. We should not just enter a classroom empty-handed. Again, do not enter the classroom empty-handed that you don't know anything. Okay, when you enter the classroom, make sure that you are the master of that subject. You know everything about that subject, okay? Because you are a teacher, okay? You should be the giver of information. Though, in our modern teaching and learning process today, it is an interactive uh, discussion. So, at some point, we do not just see the teacher as the sole giver of information, but we also get it from the students. However, still the teacher need to facilitate, needs to facilitate the learning of the students. The information that the students are giving to you, you need to facilitate that, process that information, okay? Because if you do not process, then that's, uh, you're not playing your role, okay? Because the role of the teacher is to process and facilitate the learnings of the students. Like for example, reporting. Okay, one of the big mistakes of reporting of teachers, there sometimes some teachers do not even process the reporting of the students. That's not correct, okay? That's not correct because you are intended to facilitate the learning of the students. Okay, whether they give so much of information, they have a very good explanation, the reporter is very good, you still need to say something about that before proceeding to the next lesson or to the next reporter. Okay, now teachers provide personal caring service to the students by diagnosing their needs and by planning, selecting, and using methods and evaluation procedures designed to promote the learning. Okay, so aside from teaching, there's also a personal attachment of the teachers to the students because a teacher needs to care also for the welfare or for the for the for the sake of the students, especially during inside the classroom or the school campus or premises, okay? So select the best method for you to teach the students. 
The process of teaching includes understanding and adhering to legal and legislated frameworks and policies. Okay, so when you teach, you are also guided by the policies of the classroom and of the school. That is why we call it legislated frameworks. Those are the frameworks we mean here. Identifying and responding to the student learning needs. So if you say that the students need to know more or to be, uh, to be trained more about in speaking, then do not disregard that. Do not focus your attention, when it, for example, in writing and writing, or in, you know, most of your students are very good in writing na. So if you think that as you identify their learning needs, they're not that good in speaking, so do, some, do something about that. Okay, do something about that. Providing effective and responsive instruction. Okay, so when you give instruction, it is really intended to be clear to them. Kaya nga sinabi siyang instruction, di ba? Kasi kailangan nai-instruct sila, nai-intindihan nila. Okay? Meaning to say, the teacher needs to give effective or clear instruction. It is really intended for them to be guided. Okay? Assessing and communicating student learning. So assessment will always be the process. Okay? Developing and maintaining a safe, respectful environment conducive, conducive to student learning. So always make sure that when you teach, you also um, think of the factor of the of the environment. Okay, if it is in face to face, the classroom. Okay, the ventilation, your devices, instructional material. Okay, that the arrangement of the chairs. But since we are in an online class, so what are you going to consider? The internet connection, your PowerPoint presentation, your camera, your audio needs all to be settled. Okay. So that when you have your live class, everything will go smoothly, just like the same when we have our face-to-face. -face. So still part of the responsibility of a teacher. Okay, establishing and maintaining professional relationships and engaging in reflective professional practice. Now, we have the standards of practice for the teaching profession. We have here at the center, the standards of the practice. We have first, the commitment to students to students and student learning. Right? As you teach, you need to be committed on that because that is your very core. That is your main objective is to give service to students in teaching and then let them learn about that. Okay? So if you see that your students are learning, meaning to say your teaching is effective, okay? you achieve your goal as a teacher. Or in short, you are a successful teacher because you have your, uh, you achieve your goal of your students to learn, for your students to learn, okay? So you need to, co you need to be committed on that. Have your commitment so firm that everything you do is for your students to, to learn. Despite of all the difficulties along the way in looking for instructional material, in deciding for the teaching strategy, in simplifying the lesson, if you are committed for your students to learn, then everything will go smooth. Okay? Moreover, we have also leadership in learning communities. Okay? A teacher should also be active even outside the, the school. Okay? So there should be a leadership also in you. Even inside the classroom, even inside the classroom, there is this sense or value of you that you are a leader. You are a leader because you give commands to your students, okay? Make sure that when you give instruction to your students, your students should follow, okay? Because if your students will not follow, then you need to uh, review your leadership quality, okay? Professional knowledge. What is meant by this professional knowledge is your degree, your certification, your diploma, your trainings, your license, and so on. Your skills as well, you know that? Professional practice, is when you are already in, engaged with teaching, the application of your learnings, and now you have it teaching. And then outgoing professional learning, okay? Those are the standards of the practice of the teaching profession. Commitment to students and student learning, again, when we are committed with our teaching, okay, we are also concerned with their care, okay, care, and we need to treat students equitably with respect 
and are sensitive to factors that influence individual student learning. Diba? So there are many factors that may influence them. Okay, example, their personal background. Okay, that is why as much as possible, do not go over on that. Okay, do not, for example, discriminate the students only because they're, this is their background, this is their religion, this is their preference, and so on, because that will really affect their learning. Instead of focusing on learning, they will think about you discriminating them, okay? Not respecting them. So that is unacceptable in teaching, okay? In teaching, you also need to respect the students, okay? Even if you think they're not correctly pronouncing the words, okay, they have this uh, sounds because of, their, because of their dialect, no? So make sure to respect that, okay? For example, in speech and oral communication, so uh, it will be still process, and it you still you could still teach the students how to pronounce it correctly, but in a good way. Okay, so that is why we need to be a sensitive one. No? They facilitate the development of students as contributing citizens of our society. Okay, leadership. Now we go over with the leadership in learning communities. Teachers also promote and participate in creation of a collaborative, safe, and supporting, I mean, supportive learning communities. They recognize their shared responsibilities and leadership roles in facilitating students' success. They maintain and uphold the principles of the ethical standards in these learning communities. So always remember that. If we have the shared responsibility of what? For our students to learn for us to facilitate the success of the students. Because that is the, that's also the objective of the students, for them to succeed in life, for them to learn when they enter the classroom, when they enter the school premises. They, they are in school because they also wanted to be successful, okay? And you, as a teacher, you now become as the instrument of that dream of the students to become successful. So you always go back and uphold the ethical standards in teaching, okay? Now, professional knowledge. Now, teachers strive to be current in their professional knowledge and recognize its relationship to practice. They understand and reflect on the student development, learning theory, pedagogy, curriculum, ethics, educational research, and related to policies and legislation to inform professional judgment in the practice, okay? So again, what is meant by this? The professional knowledge is your uh, knowledge. It is your uh, expertise in teaching, okay? Your background, how deep your knowledge is for you to facilitate the learning of the students. So that is why uh, we also allow our skills or our knowledge to grow attend different trainings, seminars, okay? Because with the changing demands of our community, we have now the K-12, also the demands of teaching changes. So part of the professional development of the knowledge is let your knowledge be updated. Professional practice, teachers apply professional knowledge and expertise, I mean experience, to promote student learning. Again, we always go on this, to promote student learning, to assess student success, and so on. It's all about the students. It's all about for them to succeed. It's all about for them to learn and to have a change in their behavior, okay? That's one sign that they learn. And then teachers now use appropriate pedagogy assessment and evaluation, resources and technology in planning for responding for and responding to the needs of the individual students and learning communities. This is what I told you earlier, that uh, you need to choose appropriate teaching strategy. There are many teaching strategies available for the teachers and then instructional materials. Make sure when you design your, your uh, I mean, when you, decide to teach this lesson, okay? The objectives will be met at the end of the lesson and then your resources, your evaluation will be anchored to your objectives to be answered and then your teaching strategy is appropriate with that kind of students you have. 
teachers refine their professional practice through ongoing inquiry, dialogue, and reflection. Again, do not, uh, do not stop learning only because you're now a fully-fledged teacher. Okay? Always allow yourself to learn every single day so that your skills in teaching will be refined. Okay? So inquire, okay? No? There should be an inquiry, dialogue, and reflection with you. Then also, teacher recognize that commitment to an ongoing professional learning is integral to effective practice to student learning. Okay? Again, attend professional learning seminars. Professional practice and self-directed learning are informed by an experience, research, and collaboration. Now, we have this, the ethical standards for teaching profession. We have the care. We also have the respect. We have trust and integrity, okay? When we mean care, it includes compassion, your love in your job, your love to your students, acceptance. There should also be acceptance. Why do you think so? Because if you are, if there is an acceptance, it would be just easy for you to address the needs of your students because you accept that these are their weaknesses, these are their strengths. At the same time, you could assess also yourself on what area are you weak on when it comes to teaching. And then if you could recognize your weakness, especially in teaching, uh, you could do something about that, okay? Because you recognize it in the first place. Because if you are in denial of that weakness of yours, you feel like it's just okay. We're, we're in, when others will assess it, then it's a problem. So make sure there is an acceptance. That's part of the care. Interest as well. Insight for developing students' potential. Teachers now express their commitment to students' well-being and learning through positive influence. So as a teacher, you need to positively influence the students. Do not discourage them, okay? Do not discourage them that they will not pass your exam, that they will not do this. But at some point, there are teachers, there are kind of teachers who are like this. It is okay if it is a form of motivation. If it is a form of motivation that they are saying that, then that's okay. As long as you get your intention, that they will get it as your motivation. Because if it is misunderstood by the students, then that's a problem. Okay? Make sure if you are motivating them by means of getting strict, okay? Make sure they will interpret it correctly. Diba? Professional judgment, okay? And empathy in the practice. What's it having professional judgment? When student fails, it's part of the profession because this is what, this is your input. So this is your grade. That's part of the professional judgment. And this is my judgment as I assess your essay following this rubric. This is just your score. Okay, that's part of the professional judgment. Sinabi siyang professional judgment because there should no any other factors that should influence you when you give scores to your students. For example, you should not be, uh, you should not, make a reason for you to pass the students only because that is your relative, only because your students are giving this, so kind to you, giving these words to you, and so on, because your professional judgment now will be questioned, okay? When we speak of professional judgment, you always base your judgment on the rubric, on the criteria, okay, or off on the standard. Okay? That is when we could say your judgment is a professional one. Okay? And empathy to the practice as well. We also have respect. Okay? Respect should always be in every aspect of our life, even in teaching. Respect begets respect. Respect your students so that they will also respect you. Intrinsic to the ethical standard of respect are trust and fair-mindedness. They honor human dignity emotional wellness, and cognitive development of your students. In their professional practice, uh, they model respect for spiritual and cultural values, show so social justice, confidentiality, freedom, democracy, and environment. Okay? There are many values that uh, respect have. Okay? Kasi kung meron kang respeto, susunod at susunod na rin yung ibang values na meron kayo. 
So do not always lose that. Trust as well. The ethical standard of trust embodies fairness. Should always be fair at all point in time when you teach. Openness and honesty. A okay, big word, honesty. Teachers' relationship with the students, okay? Colleagues, parents, guardians, and the public are based on trust, okay? That is why you were able to build a very good relationship with those parties because in the first place, the community entrusted you. They okay? gave a trust in you that you could bring something. You could do something for the students to be successful one. And then later, they will contribute to the community, okay? So, anong mga nakikita dun sa trust na yun? Again, the relationship of the teacher with the students. Who are you when it comes to your students? What is your relationship with your students? Your colleagues as well, with your co-teachers, your co-workers. Who are you on that note? The parents of the students, the guardians, and the public as well. Okay? Honesty. I mean, integrity. Okay? Integrity entails honesty, reliability, and moral action are embodied in the ethical standard of integrity. Continual reflection assists teachers in, a, in exercising integrity in their professional commitments and responsibilities. Okay? So there are different purposes that the teachers have. To inspire, okay, to inspire teachers to reflect and uphold the honor and dignity of teaching profession. Always honor and uh, be dignified person with your profession. Okay? Huwag niyong kalimutan yun. To identify the ethical responsibilities and commitments in the teaching profession. To guide ethical decisions and actions in teaching profession because decision making is also important in teachers tend to promote the public trust and confidence in the teaching profession, okay? So again, the always remember, okay, the nature of teaching, what is profession, who are the professional, who are these teachers as professionals, what are the standards of practice for teaching profession, and your commitment to the students, leadership in learning communities, professional knowledge, professional practice, outgoing professional learning, and the ethical standard for the teaching profession in which we have the values of care, respect, trust, and integrity. Okay. 